Now whilst your hunter comes with many tools and weapons to take down the beasts in Monster Hunter World, your trusty Palico also comes with numerous gadgets to help aid you in your quests. I'm Dartblade and in this video we're going to bring you a hunter's guide to the Palico gadgets. Now the Palico gadgets are equipment that you can use on your Palico. Should you be playing solo or duo, these trusty feline companions will follow you around helping out where they can. However, they can start performing specialised roles thanks to the gadgets they carry into battle with them. But what are these gadgets and how do you unlock them? Not all the gadgets are unlocked from the start unfortunately, but putting in the time and effort to actually find them, complete the quests that unlock them, can really make it worth it in the long run. On top of that, each gadget normally comes with two uses that a hunter and their palico can use against a monster. Now all the gadgets can be levelled up. It's also worth mentioning as well that the Palicos will use the level 5 and level 10 abilities of the gadgets on their own, even if you haven't called them to do so. However, this is at random intervals and it won't be all the time. On top of that as well, you can also manually command them once you've leveled up the gadgets to level 5 and 10 to use their respective gadgets abilities. So anyway, let's get into the episode and look at the various gadgets for the Palico. The first is the Vigor Wasp Spray. This gadget is the first one you get. You get it from the start of the game. There are no quests related behind it. It's the default equipment your Palico will have. This is a small sack that uses Vigor Wasp honey to recover a hunter's health. So it's a hill. Once used, the Palico will pull out the Vigor Wasp Spray and then float over to your hunter's location. Afterwards, it will burst, healing not only you, but also your Palico, should they have been wounded. As you start leveling up the Vigor Wasp Spray, the heal becomes more and more potent. Once you get it to level 5, you are able to manually request a Vigor Wasp Spray, so you can manually tell your Palico to come over and heal you. While sometimes they can be a little bit slow, it's nonetheless a great option, especially if you're low on potions. At level 10 though, you can also get your Palico to set up a Vigor Wasp station. This will allow your Palico to leave a Vigor Wasp on the ground for you to pick up and use when the time is right. It's basically like a healing station. You'll notice Vigor Wasps scattered around the world as you explore, and the station works very similar to these. Now the Vigor Wasp spray is not the most complex of gadgets, but it does its job really well. Being able to heal you without having to rely on your potions and that is a great assist to you as a hunter. But anyway, let's move on to the second gadget, which is the Flash Fly Cage. This is found in the Ancient Forest. As you start exploring the Ancient Forest, normally in expedition mode, you'll find doodles scattered around the environment. These doodles are left by the Grimalkin. The Grimalkins that are in the Ancient Forest are called the Bug Trappers. Anyway, after you track them down with your scout flies, you'll finally come across one of these wild Grimalkin in the wild. Chase him down, follow him, until you reach his base. Here, your Palico will start talking to the group of wildcats and everyone will become friends. They'll also reward you with a flash fly cage, as well as the ability to tame the small jagras in the ancient forest. But anyway, what does the flash fly cage do? Well, it's a bug trapper. It traps insects inside it. And then these can then be attacked to create a blinding light that will temporarily stun monsters, or should they be flying in the air, bring them down to the ground. This can be very useful, especially against flying monsters. On top of that, the potency of the actual flash from the flash fly cage is increased as you level up the ability. Now at level 5, you'll be able to manually call your palico to put down a flash fly cage. And at level 10, you get a very useful ability. This will allow your palico to put down a makeshift flash fly shock trap on the ground. This can stun enemy monsters, similar to how the standard shock trap works. However, it doesn't consume anything, so it comes in incredibly handy. However, monsters who are constantly caught in this trap will have diminishing returns, so they won't stay stunned for long if they've been caught multiple times with the trap. Nonetheless though, it's very useful for solo play. Anyway, moving on to the next gadget, which is the Shield Spire. This is found in the Grimalkin Wild Spire Waste quest. The Grimalkin in the Wild Spire Waste are called the Protectors. As you head to the Wild Spire Waste and you follow the doodles that head to the Grimalkin lair, you will then be given a quest by the Grimalkin that you find there. His pals are lost and you have to go around capturing them with your capture net. They are scattered all over the place but you can find them on your map. So make sure you go to your map, filter if you need to and find them that way. Afterwards you can click on one and your scout flies will go and track it down. When you see one, approach it quietly, because if they notice you, they will run off. After you've caught three of them, go back to the camp, tell the protector that you found his friends, and they will reward you with the Shield Spire Palico gadget, as well as the ability to tame Kestodons whilst in the Wild Spire Waste. Anyway, the Shield Spire gadget is a massive shield, well, for a Palico anyway. The Palico can then use this to defend against attacks, and it can also be used to provoke monsters, taunting them away from the hunter, 
and making them attack the Palico. Now, as you level it up, the actual guard and the blocking mechanics of this shield will increase. At rank 5, you'll be able to command your Palico to manually taunt the enemy, and once you get it to level 10, you'll be given a shield bash, which allows the Palico to deal some blunt damage with this gadget. The next gadget is the Coral Orchestra, and this is found in the Coral Highlands. Now, to unlock this, you have to go to the northeast area of the Coral Highlands. Here you should stumble across some Grimalkin riding some Shamals, the strange lizard type creatures you find in the Coral Highlands. Anyway, normally you would ignore them, but you have to attack them. Afterwards, they'll shout some insults and run off. Your Palico then encourages you to go and find them. Anyway, afterwards, follow their tracks to a location that is in the northeast behind a waterfall. Here, the Grimalkin, known as the Troopers, will start talking to your Palico. They will then give you a quest to complete. This is an optional quest. So go back to Astera and sign up for the quest known as Troubled Troopers. This has you taking on two Zitsi Yakus. Once the quest is complete, you'll speak to the troopers again and you'll receive the Choral Orchestra. Now this gadget is very useful. It is a musical instrument that your Palico will play. And as it plays different songs and melodies, it will provide buffs to you and even your entire team. These buffs can be attack boost, defense boost, or status resistances. And all of these buffs are increased as the gadget levels up. Now at level 5 you can call for your Palico to manually use the Coral Orchestra wind instrument. And at level 10 you can call them to manually use the drum instrument for a second buff. Once you've made friends with the troopers as well, your Palico will also get the ability to tame Shamos. Now the next gadget is the Plunder Blade. This is found in the Rotten Vale. Now this is a bit more of a trickier gadget to unlock. Now to unlock this, you have to have the Linian Researcher in the Rotten Vale. He also has to be in the lower parts near where the Adogaron nest is located. This is also in high rank. Anyway, once you find him there, go speak to him. He'll say something about an Adogaron dragon carrion with it. This is an indicator to the Legiana corpse that you can find in the Rotten Vale. Anyway, there are a few ways to do this, but the easiest way I found was to simply just sit there and wait with the researcher in the Adogaron nest, and eventually the Adogaron will drag the Legiana corpse into its nest. For the most part, the Adogaron is non-aggressive, so it will just eventually leave, ignoring you and the researcher, and also leaving the carcass in its nest. Afterwards, you'll notice that a Grimalkin runs out towards the Legiana corpse. Now as you approach it, it will eventually run away. Afterwards your Palico will tell you to go and track it down. So follow the tracks deeper into the Vale until you get to an area where the Grimalkin completely runs away. Now this is in an area that's filled with bioluminescence. Now keep an eye on what your Palico is telling you as it will tell you to potentially feed these hungry looking wildcats. So put some raw meat on the floor and stay back. Eventually the Grimalkin will come out, take the meat, have a conversation with you and your Palico, and accept you as their friend. Once you're friends with the Plunderers, they will reward you with the Plunder Blade, as well as the ability for your Palico to tame Giros. Now the Plunder Blade is a great tool for farming. It will allow your Palico to draw these blades and attack the monster to gain materials from it. Now as you level up the blades, the quantity of stolen materials increase. And at rank 5, you can manually tell your Palico to attack with the Plunder Blade melee range, or at rank 10, you can ask them to do a Plunder Blade boomerang, which is a ranged version of the attack. Now the final Palico gadget is the Meowlatov Cocktail, which is found in the Elder's Recess. Now as this is the last item, there is also another complicated quest behind it. Of course you have to get to the point where you can get to the Elder's Recess, so you have to progress a fair way through the story. You also have to have collected all the other Palico equipment and defeated Zora Magdaros for a second time. Anyway, after you've defeated him for a second time, you can speak to the Linian researcher in Estera. Anyway, he'll give you a quest to track down 10 Gajalaka tracks or doodles. However, these are not restricted to just the Elder's Recess. They are scattered in every single area that you find these Gajalakas. So, I found two in the Ancient Forest in two different locations, two in the Wildspire Waste in two different locations, two in the Coral Highlands, but both were in the same location, two in the Rotten Vale, but again, these were both in the same location, and finally, two in the Elder's Recess, and again, these were both in the same location. These gave me ten. Afterwards, you should have completed the quest, and you can go back to the Linian Researcher in Estera. Once you spoke to him, you and him head off to the Elder's Recess. Here you're going to try to find the Gajalaka's base, but you have to do this at night. Once night falls, speak to the researcher to begin the next step of the quest. You will then need to move past all the Gajalakas in the area that you're tracking with your scout flies as you approach their base. The best way to do this is to equip your ghillie mantle and sneak past them as they dance. However, you can do this without the ghillie mantle if you're feeling brave enough. When you reach the bottom of the crystal cave that they're located in, 
crawl through the little hole and you'll meet the Gajalaka Knight. He will then chat to you and reward you with the Meowlatov cocktail. It will also teach your Palico the ability to tame the Gastodons. Anyway, the Meowlatov cocktail is a DPS focused gadget. It throws a Gajalaka style bomb that deals damage to opponents. Now, as you level this up, it gains in proficiency, thus dealing more damage. At level five as well, you're able to manually tell your Palico to throw one of the cocktails. And at rank 10, it will allow your Palico to load the cocktail into their Palico Slinger, which is like a small little catapult thing you might see them using. This allows them to do a bit more of a barrage of cocktail attacks at a monster. But anyway, these are all the gadgets available to the Palicos in Monster Hunter World. Each of them, as you can see, seem to be a specialized role, whether it be healer, tank, DPS, support, or even just for farming. Now, if you're playing as a duo, having two different gadgets can really help a smaller team. So try to communicate with your partner to what they are using and try to use something different that will also benefit everyone. Now this was just a simple guide going over the gadgets. Now if you're interested and want more in-depth information about the quests I can do that in different videos but this was an overview guide of all the Palico gadgets and what they do. So I hope you found this information helpful and until next time I've been Darkblade bringing you a hunter's guide to the Palico equipment in Monster Hunter World. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.